Good morning, good morning, good morning again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do another what the actual neurotypicals moment. As an individual who lives in Missouri, no, I don't care if I dox myself. Come at me. I am a call center employee. There is a whole lot of repressed freaking rage. So please, please make my day. Okay? Make my day. But anyways, as an individual who actually lives in Missouri where Anheuser-Busch is primarily located... Can y'all explain to me, Republicans, Republican neurotypicals, can you show me on the doll where the Budweiser touched you? I'm sorry, but seriously? If you all haven't noticed, the alcoholic companies do actually sell their wares to individuals who are part of the LGBTQ community. Where have you been? Have you ever been inside a gay bar? What is it do you think that they drink there? Okay. But, but. A trans person is hawking alcohol. The horror. Dude. Is this individual in any way, shape, or form because of their decision that they made in their own personal lives affecting you in any way, shape, or form? Does it affect your job, your life, your religion, or anything that has to do with you? No. Then what's your problem? What's your problem? They're not preventing you from going out there and living your life unless you're just that special level of paranoid. Anything that they do does not in any way, shape, or form affect you. So why are we having a fit here? So are you... Are you defending that they're hampering our way of life? I'm laughing at you in logic, okay? Go with me here. Is this individual hawking alcohol on the behalf of Anheuser-Busch in any way, shape, or form affecting your ability to be able to work your job, go out in public, practice your religion, or doing, well, anything? No, it's not. It's an individual being paid for advertising someone's wares. Happens every day. And you're having a fit, like a five-year-old. I've never seen such levels of ridiculousness. I don't see you all having fits over Nike. You know, the people who literally have evidence against them of running sweatshops. But Anheuser-Busch, who provides jobs here in the United States, they're the bad guy for getting an influencer with lots of lots of individuals that they are able to reach out to advertise their wares. And let's dig into it, because this has been bothering me for a while. And I know have I have individuals, conservatives, who follow me on my TLs. But can someone explain to me some of these neurotypicals fixation on where people pee? Because this is bizarre to me. I don't understand why so many individuals are obsessed with where people go pee. Like, how does this affect you? There are some individuals who absolutely insist, but it's, but it's taking away our safe spaces. 
Okay, but go with me here. Go with me here, neurotypicals. The bathroom is your safe space. Literally a public area where people go number one and number two, that's your safe space. The public bathroom. Are you kidding me? Are you literally kidding me right now? But girls can be attacked in there. You are in a public bathroom, ma'am. This is hardly someone coming into your home, slipping through the window. You have literally lines of people waiting to use a stall. Do you not think, using logic here, if an individual is actually going to use that as a capacity to attack an individual, that all these people are just going, who are standing in line, literally just going to sit there and let it happen? Logic, folks, it's your friend. It's literally your friend, okay? Predators do not plan their attack to happen in a public area where there are quite a few spectators who can be witnesses to such events that would be able to identify them. Seriously, seriously. But they mentioned that they, they got turned on. Whatever gets you through tonight, Karen, okay? In a women's bathroom, there are stalls. So go with me here. What do you think it is that they're getting off on? My ankles? How my jeans crumple to the floor when I'm getting ready to go to number two? It's a weird kink. I mean, I guess everybody, whatever, but why are we obsessed with where people go pee? Especially if they're public bathrooms. Last time I checked, public bathrooms and restrooms is not the optimal place for a predator to go find and kidnap a victim because there are far too many potential witnesses to ID this person. Use your common sense, people. Good God. Is your life literally so damn sad that you just sit there and pontificate upon the reasons why an individual would go into a bathroom? Because I don't get it, folks. I really don't get it. Whatever you identify as, if you are using a public restroom in the stall next to me, I'm going to assume it's because you had to go number one or number two. The only thing I'm going to be outraged about is if you're going to be one of those assholes who use all the toilet paper. You know, you piss on the toilet seat and you don't even wipe it down afterwards. Then you have a legitimate argument. You're one of those people who don't flush and somehow have managed to smear shit on the walls and on the toilet seats. Then we might have a problem. But if you're a transgendered individual who just needs to use the bathroom and you're in the stall next to me, we don't have problems, okay? I don't get it. I further don't get it, but it's taking away safe spaces from females. If your safe space as a female is a public restroom, I don't know what to tell you other than you might need to rethink a few things. 
Okay. Maybe it's because my safe space that's never literally been a public bathroom. I'm autistic. My safe space is here. My home. Okay. Violating my safe space would be an equivalent of some person being able to unlock my French doors, jump over my balcony, and assault me. That's invading my safe space. If you're an individual who's trans who just needs to go pee, you're in the stall next to me, in the female's bathroom, you're not violating my safe space. <sighs> Sorry, but this whole thing. And you got re state Republicans going off on Budweiser. So again, I'll ask you in closing this argument so that we can actually get to Dr. Matthew Israel's level of insanity. Republicans who find this so offensive, can you show me on the doll where the Budweiser touched you? All right, so folks, in the description box, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroplastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit they did not remove it from the website. Well, folks, Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also linked in there, you're going to find Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding, folks, in case the JRC actually has you know, the gall, the see-through of their threat. Also linked in there, the Ozarks' first article in regards to the Agape Boarding School slash now known as Stone for Help Boarding School situation. This is a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has and pending folks over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it all which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and folks that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor who's still on the premises, with, multi with access to the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You got an attorney general too busy chasing after drag queens and defunding public libraries to do his job, and you've got a governor off his net. So please, folks, share that article on all your social media. You got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the sub subject. Jennifer Masamba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you do got young children present, folks, very much... Parental supervision is very much advised. Trigger warning, we are about to again descend into the mad ravings of the lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear gaslighting, pseudoscience, lies, victim blaming, abuse and torture apologensia, all coming from a man with a massive ego and even larger God complex. So folks, be prepared for the stupid. Uh, make this short. I have to order some croissants because my shaking is getting a little bit nuts. So let's go to the next paragraph and make it short and sweet. There are four cases where it may be necessary to use skin shock or some other effective aversive to treat a behavior which on its face and when not considered in its full context might be to the casual advisor 
not seem important enough to need to receive the application of the skin shock. <sighs> thought crimes, folks, literal thought crimes. Number one, the behavioral in question seems minor on its face, but in actuality is an antecedent to some aggressive, self-abusive, or other major problematic behavior. Again, doctor, I bring you back to my argument as to how do you know that when the person is having the, the behavior, like the getting up out of your seat, for example, or the swear word, in which context it's going to be used? Because you got to be a mind reader. You have no idea when the word fuck leaves an individual out of their out of their mouths, whether that is going to be fuck yes or fuck no or fuck you. Right? You don't. Which means your argument is baseless and a joke. If an individual gets up out of their seat, even if it's an individual who has previously got out of their seat to do an aggressive action, you get out of your seat out of several contexts. A person who can be aggressive when out of their seat can also need to go use the bathroom. Again, you are torturing them over actions they have not taken because you assume that you know what they're going to do when in actuality, you have no idea, okay? Your logic does not work here, sir. We're gonna go through the next paragraph here and go ahead and read them out because yeah, it's shaky. Doesn't feel good, folks, it sucks. The behavior in question seems minor on its face, but actually is an altered form of self-abusive or other problem behavior that is in the process of being decelerated through the use of adversive. For example, in treating the behavior of pulling out one's hair as the behavior decreases in frequency, in behavior of pulling out one's hair as behavior decreases in frequency in response to the adversive, it also sometimes changes its form. Oh, dear God. You ever see someone pull their hair out because of frustration, doctor? Because neurotypicals do it every day. Ugh. And now you're going to say it changes its form, so we're completely legitimized and shocking you literally for any reason they can come out with. Then as it drives in frequency in response to aversive, it may change its form first to a form of tugging on the hair, then merely to grabbing the hair, then merely to reaching for the hair, then to merely lifting the hand toward the hair. Okay, doctor, do you know how many gestures that there are that moves towards the hair? How far does my hand have to beat from the hair in order to be shocked? What if I just want to flip you off? Is this close enough to my hair that you feel legitimized in shocking me? What if I have a question? What if I'm doing this because the absurdity of your statement? Because it's this far from my hair, do I get shocked? Do you see how stupid this is? <sighs> you can literally legitimately say that you're shocking a person because their hand moved. Because it could possibly pull their hair. It could flip you off. It could wave at you. It could be grabbing a pencil. Seriously. To treat the full bone behavior of pulling out the hair is necessary to treat all of these modified forms of the behavior with an effective adversive if positive only procedures are not effective. If they are not treated, the behavior is likely to quickly grow back to the full-blown pulling out of one's hair. Again, your logic does not work, doctor, because any kind of physical expression an individual can have, you can use that as an excuse to shock them. Because you've got no guidelines on it, for God's sake. You could say me petting my cat because I'm raising my hand might be antecedent to me pulling my hair out. It doesn't make sense. Your arguments are a joke. You are literally torturing people out of thought crimes. You do not know why I'm raising my hand. 
It could be pull out my hair. It could be to flip you off. It's because I may need to make an expression and I talk with my damn hands. It's a joke. <sighs> but if you raise your hand, let me, doctor, many people raise their hands. You can say that any individual could be raising hands to possibly be pulling their hair out. We do not know for certain if the individual who is raising their hand or even touching their hair may possibly pull it out. Most of us have unconscious things that we do with our hair throughout the day, especially as women with long hair. You could be literally shocking an individual who just wanted to tuck a stray strand behind their ear. Those of us with sensory issues, myself in particular, have problems with bangs because of the feeling. And we may be messing with that. Or here's a thought, maybe they have sensory issues with their hair. You can cut their hair as a means in a way to help with that particular sensory issue without torturing the person so that they no longer feel the need to pull out their hair. But that would be logical. We just can't have that, can we, doctor? We're going to close out on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to get the comments. I do appreciate your time. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea do hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.